today. We talk all things Steel City Con August 2021 edition on Tom Was Here. Hi everyone, Tom Was Here back at it again with another review of the August 2021 edition of Steel City Con. Now, I mean, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, this Steel City Con, above any of the other previous Steel City Cons, um, was a, I would say, very popular one, if I could say, or a very busy one in terms of people. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were all busy. Usually Friday, um, when the people that are coming in to sign stuff usually don't come in until later in the day. Uh, I heard reports that it was busy all day. Saturday, which I went last time, was I heard a madhouse. And Sunday, which is the day I actually went, uh, was super busy as well. And part of the reason for that is that uh, in some cases, some of the bigger draws will only come limited times of the day. Like they may come just Friday and Saturday. Or they may come just Saturday. And so lines for certain people, you know, get, kind of get evened out because some of these people are staying limited times. You know, you can only catch them Friday and Saturday. You can't catch them all three days. Well, the big draw, Robert England, was there all three days. And I don't think Steel City Con anticipated the audience that a Robert England could. I'm not saying they didn't. And kudos to Steel City Con for actually getting a Robert England to come. You know, I know they had John Barenthal and they had a bunch of other people lined up for this and a few people dropped out. But Robert England is a get. I mean, that's a that's a big get. Um, I, I really do appreciate Steel City Con because I've been going for many, many years. The first one I went to, I met Roddy Roddy Piper and Ernie Hudson, and I've been coming back ever since. It was a long time ago. And Steel City Con has grown since then. And so it's great that they have a Robert England and, and they're getting other top gets um, from other cons to come to Steel City Con uh, because Steel City Con... Uh, is definitely attempting to compete with the larger cons. Um, they are keeping it at the Monroeville Convention Center. I mentioned in the last review video that, you know, there was con some concerns that they outgrew that facility a long time ago. But really, I've noticed it more this time with Robert England than even more all previous times. As much as, yes, they did probably outgrow the Monroeville Convention Center, I understand why they're not going to leave. They like to keep costs low for... Um, vendors, they like to keep costs low for people that are coming, and I understand that. The issue, I think, for Steel City Con this time, and, and probably for all future times if they have um, larger people, people that command an audience like a Robert England, it comes down to the logistics, unfortunately. Um, back in the old days, they kind of shuffled photo ops around a couple different places. It used to be on the right side where the celebrities are. And uh, now it's moved into the larger room on the left. The larger room on the left used to be for the top gets. If you wanted to say, I think like when Christopher Lloyd was there. First time William Shatner was there. Um, what's the kid that's uh, Draco Malfoy? Tom Felton, I think, was back there. People that commanded a significantly longer line was in that back room. And that worked because a large group of people could be kind of herded into that back room. Like if you wanted to wait for a Christopher Lloyd or a Tom Felton, of which there was a considerable wait, not necessarily the Robert England wait that was this weekend, they would put you into that room. Now that room is used for the photo ops. And I understand why they use that room for the photo ops. The photo ops room move very efficiently, very quickly. And the reason being is that they have them lined up in such a way that it works out really well. The issue is, is that now they moved all the celebrities kind of into the main room. And now, and, and like I said, once again, this is kudos to Steel City for getting this much people, is that they're starting to kick off the celebrities to like the side as well. So like they used to be in kind of like the main row. And now this year, um, people like the guys from Night of the Living Dead, Monica Kina and Judith Hogue, um, 
April O'Neil from Ninja Turtles were kind of kicked off to the side and they put April O'Neil kind of right near the bottleneck. And if you've been to Steel City Con, you know what the bottleneck is. It's right by the food, the food area. There's one main drag. It goes from the center aisle of the con straight back to the celebrities. And right there, they have the food, they have other things going on, and everybody kind of bottlenecks in that area. Now, there is a different opening. It's all the way to the other side, but no one ever goes on that side. So that side opening is usually far less traveled than that main bottleneck opening. They put Judith Hogue over there, and she was actually drawing a good bit of line. The issue is, is that they have a bar set up, you know, for like alcoholic drinks on that side as well, and they have the food on the other side. And the Robert England line was extending back there too. So it really made for a difficult time to get around. So they have to figure out some form of logistics uh, to attempt to figure out how to get these lines for great guests to be put in somewhere. Like I said, it was ideal when it was, if they had two of those types of rooms, one room that was um, for the photo ops and another room that was for like the larger gets, that would really be ideal for them. But unfortunately, they don't own the building. It's a, it's a smaller convention center. It used to be a department store. Um, and so, you know, they don't have the logistical workings to, um, to make that work. Now, the Q&A room, I always thought maybe in a perfect world, they can figure out a way to squeeze some form of, you know, things in there. But I don't think that would work logistically. I think what needs to occur, ideally, is the photo ops may need to move back over to where the other side of the room is where they have the picture tables from the previous celebrities that were at the con and where you get top loaders and COAs. There's a large area there that could even extend into that next room because in that next room is the large vendor area. But there's like a part that's like cut off where it has like some tables where people sit down at that I think maybe even use part of the backstage area and part of there for photo ops and take the celebrities like a Robert England type and kick them back into that back room. I think that will help everyone in the long run because um, the Robert England line, and I've heard you know reports from Friday and Saturday um, that it extended really long. Friday especially. Saturday they try to do it virtually or even Friday evening they try to do it virtually. And I've heard stories that people weren't getting text messages until the next day. And I even heard stories about people getting turned away from Robert England's line. Um, even if they were VIP, which VIP should be front of the line access. But I think what occurred was there were too many VIPs sold. And the, the one thing about Robert England, this is not a knock on him, is that um, he's a very nice guy. And he likes to talk to people. And he likes to talk to his fans. And he likes to tell them stories. And they ask him questions and he answers honestly. He's not rushing you along. He's giving you an experience. Because this was Robert England's first time at Steel City Con, I don't know how familiar people were. I know I certainly was, and I've learned based on people that have met him before, you know, just that he really likes to talk to people and give them an experience. The issue occurred here at Steel City is that there were too many people, too many people that wanted his autograph. So the lines were really long, and he wasn't moving through them quickly. And, and look, how many people, it, you know, leave a message in the comments below. If you ever met a celebrity at a con or he, you walked up their table, you're like, hey, nice to meet you. They signed your stuff and you were on your way. They just signed it and that's the job and that's what they're doing. Here's the money. Bye. And they're just on their way. So it's cool that a Robert England type would, you know, want to talk to people and give them an experience. It just, it didn't work out that way. But a lot of people knock Steel City Con for how they handled it. Um, on Sunday, you know, I, I, I only heard reports of Friday and Saturday and heard it was a mess. I can't speak for Friday and Saturday as I wasn't there. I only heard the reports. Sunday was, um, they didn't do the virtual queue. They limited the items, him signing to two items a piece. And I got in his line. I wanted to get there early. It was still the earliest I've ever got to a con. And I got there at about like 10, I think. 
and kind of saw the lay of the land. The line was, he they actually extended him into that photo op room. They extended him into the photo op room and it extended like, you know, five cues around, then the outside about five cues, and then started extending into past where the Q and A's go and um, out to the main like vendor area. I got in that line, I was in that line for an hour and moved maybe five feet. Uh, knowing I had photo ops in the next couple of hours, I was like, well, this just won't work. And I got out of line and kind of resigned to the fact that I wouldn't get this signed. Uh, I purchased this from Halloween Costumes and wanted to get it signed. And sadly, did not get it signed. So I may have to send it in to Zobi or, or one of the other mail order places or maybe to Robert England's direct mail order site um, in an attempt to get this signed. Because um, this is a nice metal one. And, you know... Back in the old days, I didn't really, wasn't big on like the autographs and stuff. I would just get photo ops with people. But even a cer like certain people, I would still get the autograph for. And Robert England is one of those people that regardless of, you know, obviously I collect more now. But I still would have wanted an autograph from him. I also got this Elm Street sign uh, that I held in the picture. Uh, with him that I was got got completely washed out because it's shinier than uh, it leads on to, but you can still make it out a little bit. But I really like the picture, um, and it was cool to meet him. He he looks like he really enjoys these photo ops and really enjoys the autographs and really likes signing uh, for people. And and that's a really cool thing. And I heard that he's coming back in April in 2022. Um, but I still think I will get this um, sent out prior to that. Um, and, you know, at least I can avoid that April 2022 because I've already met the man. I've got a picture with him and I would have an autograph glove and that would be fine for me. And if I'm feeling super froggy or if they figure out a way to organize it better, maybe I'd go for signing this Elm Street sign as well. Um, but let's talk about the other celebrities at the con. Um, and look, I'm all for, I know my son wanted to see some of the AEW wrestlers that were there. Um, and he understands people that want to be safe and um, protocols and stuff. We have nothing against people that, you know, uh, one to wear a mask for photo ops. I saw some of the celebrities did that and some of them didn't. Uh, I also noticed that the people that, you know, like Orange Cassidy, the AEW star, and Miro, formerly Rusev, and the WWE wore masks for all photo ops and wore masks for even like the professional photo ops. And to each its own. Like I said, I'm not going to pass judgment on them. But at the same time, uh, that's kind of soured my son on wanting to get a picture with them. Not no knock on them wanting to be safe. It was just kind of, that's, you know, he's like, he's like, they could, you know, he's like, I wouldn't even tell who they were. And he may have a point there, but I'm not going to knock them on, on wanting to be safe. Um, but we met uh, Carl Weathers and Carl Weathers, super nice guy. The only bummer about Carl Weathers one is that he didn't have a, um, he didn't have a uh, photo op at his table. And why is that with some celebrities? Um, Certain celebrities don't want selfies taken at the table. I mean, I would say that's another source of income for them. I did overhear someone in Carl Weathers' line mention something about the fact that they have some deal worked out with the, the professional photo op people that they don't take pictures at the table and therefore... Um, I don't know, it's, it's some, like, arrangement or something where they're not actually, like, allowed, not allowed, but, like, like the arrangement says they can't take photo ops at the table, which is surprising to me um, because I think you would make significantly more money if you did take photos at the table. That's why some, mostly everybody does it. Um, but Robert England, I know, did not, and Carl Weathers did not. It kind of bummed out because I didn't want to take a picture with Carl Weathers, um, but we met the man. He was super nice to me and super nice to my son. Um, you know, I've heard conflicting reports. Um, some people that you had a bad experience with him, but he could not have been nicer to me and could not have been nicer to my kid. And so we got a, um, a Happy Gilmore signed item. Now, I've really cool, nice guy. It's been in a ton of movies. Still in, 
you know, you know, he's getting older now, but I mean, like, he, he's not the shape that he was in in Predator, and well, neither is Arnold, for that matter, but, um, you know, still, like, you know, I always had a thing, an argument that you have to kind of look like what you looked like, you know, <laughs> is, is that a snobbish way to look at it, that you kind of have to look like what you look like in, in the film, or in a movie, or in what you're famous for, for me to determine whether to get a picture with you? I don't know if that's a snobby way to look at it, but that's the way I've always looked at it. Um, but Carl Weathers has taught me, good guy, um, very cool to meet. I just bummed out that I didn't, I didn't think about getting a photo op with him. I usually end up getting one photo op and it's usually like one of like the bigger stars of the thing. And that's only because they don't take a picture at a table. But this time it was two people that didn't take a picture at a table. And Carl Weathers, unfortunately, missed the cut on that front. But we did get to auto with him, and he was super nice to my son. Um, the other things that we picked up um, before getting into the celebrity stuff is we ran past the table um, where they had the previous um, signers. And they always had some really good discounts at the table. And, you know, my son really, really, run, you know, he's been eyeballing this like the last couple cons. Um, they had this Rey Mysterio signed poster, and he met Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio was super nice to us. And so, uh, he signed a mask for him. My son was wearing a mask, and he signed it for him. Um, but he wanted this Rey poster. Rey's his favorite wrestler of all time. So I was happy to get this for him. It was 30 bucks. It's like 11 by 17 size. 30 bucks. Um, so, you know, I couldn't pass that up as far as the deal goes. I think Rey was charging like 40 or 50 when he was there a couple years back. The other one I got, um, which I'm trying to determine what to do with, um, whether I want to keep it or put it in like a potential giveaway for when I get to 2,000 subscribers, I'm kind of on the fence either way, but I couldn't resist the value. One of my favorite wrestlers in the 90s, you know, as a 11, 12 year old, somewhere in that time frame is when he got big, was Scott Hall, but formerly Razor Ramon uh, of the WWE, uh, WWF to age myself and this is a razor ramon signed um 11 by 17 as well signed at razor ramon um but it, you know scott hall signed he was there a few years back i got a picture with him as well um but it was 20 bucks 20 bucks is solid value um for that um so like definitely deciding if i something i want to put on the wall or if it's something i want to put in a giveaway but I always hit up that table because there's always usually pretty good value at that table. Um, so definitely, you know, if you're familiar with Steel City Con, always head over to that table to see because they always seem to mark things down and get them pretty good pricing. And I just, you know, I, I was like, one of these times I'm going to pull the trigger and it just happened to be, yes, um, well, yesterday. But um, a couple other people I met, Tom Arnold. Um, Tom Arnold, big fan of, uh, been in a ton of stuff. Things you don't even think about. You know, I mean, True Lies was great. Like, it was Tom Arnold's best performance. Like, he, he was fantastic in True Lies. True Lies, underrated action comedy movie. Um, but the one that I'm very partial to, the guilty pleasure of which I'm very partial to, um, is not Nine Months. It's a movie with Hugh Grant and Julianne Moore and Tom Arnold is married to Joan Cusack, and it's about um, kind of the trials and tribulations of, you know, dealing with pregnancy and, and having kids. Robin Williams is in this as well. Um, but a funny, funny movie. You know, one of those funny 90s movies that doesn't get the fanfare it should. But I absolutely love that film. Um, so just big fan of him. Um, so I just grabbed a picture with him. Didn't get anything signed or anything. Um, and I was going to do the same uh, when it comes to uh, Judith Hogue, who was the first April O'Neil from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I was just getting a picture with her because she was April O'Neil, and I grew up on that film. You know, I was like seven or eight at, when that movie came out. And, you know, it's just, you know, that was... Turtles were big, giant to kids who don't understand. The Ninja Turtles were like everything you know in the early late 80s early 90s you know they were giving those tapes away with pizza hut meals and doing promotions and saturday morning cartoons and when they did a live action movie you know it was great to kids of a certain age but when you watch it when you're older that's a surprisingly good movie i mean there's a lot of heart in that movie and 
Judith Hogue was April O'Neil. Yeah, they replaced her in the sequel, um, but Judith Hogue is April O'Neil. Um, at least my April O'Neil. And I'll be honest, I was just going to grab a picture with her. But when there is a photo on the table that's truly inspired, truly well thought out, I will pull the trigger on it. And I did so here. This is genius. Whoever, whether it's Judith Hogue, her team, or whatever, had this on the table. This is genius um, as far as photos. And I, I actually had the, I was in line, I was getting a selfie. You know, just the selfie. I wasn't going to get anything else. And I saw this sitting on the table and I could not resist. That's phenomenal. Um, if you remember in the movie, she was sketching this um, when Raphael was like in an extended like, I don't know if he's like coma. I don't know what the deal was, but Leo was waiting outside the door, waiting for him to like wake up. But the fact that she, I mean, she didn't actually sketch this, but in the movie she sketched this, that's inspired. I will, look, I will give credit where credit's due, but either way, that got an autograph out of me. Um, but that's, that's awesome. I know they had, um, someone was telling me there were larger versions of these that other cast people were signing. But this is, this is good enough for me. This is, uh, this is amazing. And then last but not least, um... Another person I met was uh, Brecken Meyer. Um, Brecken Meyer from Road Trip and from Clueless. From I Always Forget, but Freddy's Dead. And Freddy's Dead, I know people knock Freddy's Dead um, as basically like a, uh, you know, like a cartoon version. It was kind of like over the top and even for a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, it was not like, there were some very dark elements to it, but it was also cartoony in a sense. But I had to get this one um, because I'm very partial to Freddy's Dead. I kind of love Freddy's Dead and Tom Arnold also is in Freddy's Dead. I forgot about that as well um, as a cameo role, but, but Freddy's Dead, when he's using the power glove on the kid, uh, you know, and doing the video game version of them. So I got the Breckenmeyer signed version of the uh, video game Freddy stomping him. <laughs> Which is, you know, I mean, ah, come on, I couldn't, re I couldn't resist. Um, but yeah, I mean, it dude's been a lot of stuff. I said Road Trip and Clueless for that alone. Um, but yeah, he's been a lot of things. Um, but but yeah, I, you know, I always enjoy Steel City Con. I know people were knocking it. They were knocking the air conditioning. Uh, they were knocking all types of stuff on the Steel City Con forum. And, you know, the bummer of the, that's a really good, pe lot of good information. Met some people on there. Everybody posts their photos and there's a lot of good feedback. But this weekend, I noticed a lot of people either attempting to troll or do some type of like misinformation where they would say like, you know, I remember started Friday. They're like, Robert Englund's going to require masks in his photos. He's going to wear a mask. He's going to tell people to wear a mask. Then that didn't happen. Then they're saying Robert Englund, you know, got upset on Saturday and he left and he never came back and he's not going to come back Sunday because there's some scheduling conflict or something. That was incorrect. A lot of misinformation and attempt to deceive people. I don't know if people were just hearing things and kind of spitballing them onto the Facebook group. But the Facebook group is normally a great thing of information, guidance. The Steel City Con people come on for Q&As. Uh, they started this year. And like I said, it's mostly great information to know like what people are charging at the table. What are the experiences people had with at other cons. But... This one, and it's very strange, I don't know why this occurred, but yeah, people were just like spouting off this stuff, and people were reading into it, like, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want to do a photo op, he's not wearing a mask, turns out he wasn't wearing one uh, for photo ops, um, just only in his line, but very strange, very strange encounter, um, but look, a lot of people were turned away, I'm bummed out I didn't get this sign, really bummed out, but I met the man, I met the man. And that alone, you know, I mean, that's, that's enough for me. 
like I said, I, I can get this signed to any one of the private signings coming up or consignment or wait till April 2022 when he comes in and get him to sign it there. Um, but I really dig Steel City Con. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I like it. I like coming back. I like going to almost every Steel City Con. I usually end up meeting someone um, that I would have not normally met um, because Wizard World doesn't come around here. Any of the other larger cons don't come to the Pittsburgh area. So Steel City Con is what we got. And all, you know, all people griping about it. And, you know, sometimes it's valid. And a lot of the times it's, you know, sometimes out of their control. Um, but Steel City Con is great. Um, and I always have a good time there. And I always meet a lot of good people there. And I have a whole bunch of pictures of meeting all types of people that kind of made their way through those those halls, those very congested Steel City Con halls. Um, but I, I like Steel City Con. I'm thrilled that they're coming back in December. Um, they're bringing Peter Weller, Robocop, um, is going to be the big draw, but also David Koechner, a few others I saw. So I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to December. Let me know your thoughts about Steel City Con. Uh, let me know, you know, if you ran into issues getting Robert Englund's autograph, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, were you successful in getting Robert Englund's autograph? And how long did it take? I've heard hours. Um, I've heard hours for certain people. Um, I just, you know, I have a situation where I have kids. I can't just get down there uh, at 8.30 in the morning or 6.30 or whatever it took to actually get his autograph and be there all day. Um, I, unfortunately, you know, I'll just be left striking out on this one. But guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You'd like to support me on Patreon like John Bailey did. You can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, you can do so at Spreadshirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, and Clubhouse. The Steel City Con 2021, August 2021 edition. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you feel about the draw. Are you Were you disappointed in how Steel City Con handled things? Um, the last thing I'll leave you on is the air conditioning. People griping about the air conditioning. Air conditioning not on. The air conditioning probably works fine, but it doesn't work fine for thousands of people traipsing through there. For bottlenecks in certain parts. And, and I think that's where the issue is going to run in, you know, run in for future cons because the ownership of Steel City Con is bringing in top gets. They're bringing in people that, you know, and good for them that they're bringing in those people that are coming in for these conventions. People that I didn't know if, you know, we'd ever see. You know, I, it gives me hope that people like a Bruce Campbell and some of the other people that hit up some of these cons will someday make their way into Steel, into Steel City Con. I'm really hoping for that. And I think it's possible. It's just the matter of figuring out new logistics for how to use the space in that building properly. You know, whether you have to kick photo ops out to the main vendor area and maybe move some of the vendors. Um, I would say at an end, either the far right end or the far left end, if you just cleared out like the six or so vendors and made that just a giant photo ops area, maybe. And I don't mean kick them out. I just mean like figure out a way to put them somewhere else if possible but i think photo ops sadly do need to move even though <laughs> they're actually the most efficiently handled way of forming lines the other uh, celebrity areas just don't have the space to form those lines but that'll wrap it up for my thoughts on steel city con august 2021 let me know your thoughts in the comments below did you like it did you have a hard time? Did you meet everybody you wanted to meet? Did you get all the autographs you wanted to get? Let me know. Let me hear from you. Um, but guys, thanks so much for watching. And until the next video, I will see you soon. But until then, bye everyone.